Good morning and welcome as we are gathered in community online here on Facebook. Glad that you could join us. I don't know about you, but I was dancing a little bit to some of that song. Uh, Sarah Mason was on the clarinet, Jan Bilden on the piano. Thank you for providing that music. With me in the sanctuary this morning, I also have uh, Addie and Mackenzie Jaronson and Nikki Rood. Uh, Cindy Busby is the, what do we call those? Uh, a, what, um, a fly on the wall? Uh, she's here as mom, and uh, glad, Cindy, that you're with us as well. Uh, today, I'd like to invite you to be part of communion. You might have seen the announcements scrolling, or you might have been aware of it. Uh, for the first time since we've been worshiping this way, we'll be celebrating the sacrament of communion. Uh, I've written more about that, but what I want you to to know is that if you'd like to take part in this, I invite you to gather, take a moment and gather some bread and some either wine or grape juice. And when we get to that portion in the worship service, when I speak the words, the body of Christ given for you, either go ahead and eat the bread yourself or perhaps you'd like to uh, serve it to anybody else in your household. When I say the blood of Christ shed for you, go ahead and, and drink the wine or the grape juice or serve it to someone else, and you can say those words, the blood of Christ shed for you. As we've been worshiping online, we also post links around this live feed. There are links for uh, donating, if you'd like to donate to continue to, so this ministry can continue. There's a link there for you. There's also a virtual friendship pad and prayer request form. Please fill that out. We'd love to know that you've been worshiping with us this morning. We'd also like to join you in prayer. If you have a prayer request, please submit it there as well. Also, the sermon notes link is there for those of you who are in confirmation. Uh, please take advantage of that and fill it out online and hit submit and you're done. Isn't that nice? You might have noticed that, uh, well, you haven't noticed yet, but a lot of the music is having to do with the world or the earth or something like that. This last week we celebrated the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So some of this music has to do with the world and, and uh, our creation. So I hope you enjoy that music. I think that's all I need to announce this morning. Glad that you're here online with us. And I invite you to join in the whole service as it appears on your screen. Hum the songs, sing the songs, shout out the responses, whatever uh, is best for you in your home. We begin with Christ is Alive. Today's Bible reading from Luke, the disciples burdened with their own grief and struggles do not recognize that Jesus is walking with them. We confess that often we do not recognize that Jesus is always present with us. Jesus calls them slow of heart to believe as he had already told them that he must die for them but then would be raised for them. We confess that often we too can be slow of heart to believe in the promises Jesus makes. Arriving at their destination, the disciples invited Jesus to stay with them. 
we confess that often we do not invite Jesus to stay with us as we go about our daily lives. Lord, forgive us. It is my privilege to declare to you who have, been call, who have called out to God in confession that the promise is for you, for your children, and for everyone. The promise is the entire forgiveness of all our sins. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. <laughs> be with you and also with you together let us pray patient Lord Jesus walk with us teach us your ways increase in us an understanding of Scripture reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread open our eyes to see you more clearly amen Continue now with the children's sermon. Hi, everybody at home. I don't, which, where, okay, I'm going over here. Hi, everybody at home. It's really good to be here in church today. I wish I could see your beautiful faces, but I'm really glad to be up here so I can talk to you. I was going to share with you something, but first I want to ask a question. Have any of you ever been around a cute little baby? Maybe a brother or sister or somebody's, somebody else's baby, and they're getting to that place where they're just starting to giggle. You know what I'm talking about? They do that cute little giggle, and everybody wants to make them giggle. It is the best thing in the world. Well, when my kids were little, turns out I was the funniest person on the face of the planet because I would play peekaboo with them. And every time I'd go like this, and every time I'd say peekaboo, they'd giggle. And it made me so happy. I never went away, obviously. I was still here. I was still standing there, but I would go peekaboo, and they'd just giggle and giggle. And you know, I never went away. I was always there with them. And as they got a little bit older, I got less funny, um, as it turns out. I, I think I'm a hoot, but... <laughs> I'm not as funny to them anymore because, you know, they got older and Peekaboo wasn't quite as funny. But thanks to Sarah Litschke and her family, they let me borrow a Where's Waldo book. So I want you to, we have it on the screen, I'm hoping, I want you to see Waldo looks, <laughs> Waldo has got a red and white shirt on, Waldo has glasses, Waldo has a red hat, I believe, and he's looking right at you. Now, Peekaboo might not be quite as funny anymore, but see if you can find Waldo. It's kind of hard because there's so many other things going around, all around Waldo right now. There's, I don't know, red and white striped animals everywhere and all kinds of things that are getting in the way of us seeing Waldo. But he's there every page of the book. Waldo is there. It's just sometimes hard to see him, to find him. Well, I'll, I'll take pity on you right now and point him out. There he is. He's right there. See, Waldo is there the whole time. And sometimes I think, you know, that reminds me a lot of how I feel even as a grown-up in this crazy world. Sometimes when I'm sad or when I'm lonely or I'm not feeling well, I feel like all that stuff gets in the way and I don't see Jesus there with me. But you know what? Always there. Much better than Waldo. And no matter what we go through, 
we have to remember that stuff is going to, it's going to be hiding from us. But Jesus is always there. Let's pray together. If my friends here will join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for always being there. Even when it's hard to feel and see, we know you're there. Amen. Or as we like to say in church, we all put our hands in and we say, Amen. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a reading from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he hears my requests for mercy. I'll call out to him as long as I live because he listens closely to me. Death's ropes bound me. The distress of the grave found me. I came face to face with trouble and grief. So I called on the Lord's name. Lord, please save me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking to each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what were you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and 
found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and it gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This morning, I'd like to talk with you a bit about heart conditions. Now, there are a lot of heart conditions, right? There's tachycardia, which is a rapid heartbeat. Bradycardia, a slow heartbeat. Cardiac arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation, asystole. And these are just those medical heart conditions. But there are also other heart conditions which each and every one of us deal with. What do I mean? Well, maybe today you find yourself heavy-hearted. Or maybe you find yourself broken-hearted. Maybe a dream you've had or a hope that you've had has been shattered and your heart along with it. Maybe an important relationship is strained and your heart aches because of it. Maybe your heart is broken as you're mourning the death of a loved one or the prospect of a loved one's death. It may be that sadness fills your heart this this spring morning. Another heart condition is being hard-hearted. Maybe with everything you're dealing with right now, Maybe you're numb to what's going on around you. Maybe your world is so overwhelming that your heart simply shuts down and you don't feel very much at all. Or maybe the hardness of heart is due to angry feelings towards neighbors or colleagues or feelings of indifference or or apathy towards someone. I'm talking about heart conditions this morning because it seems to me that heart conditions are addressed in our reading from Luke. But before we take a closer look at that, and we will, let me get right to the good news because I need to hear this this morning, and maybe you do too. God doesn't leave us by ourselves and stuck and brokenhearted, and God doesn't leave us by ourselves and angry and indifferent and hard-hearted, but rather... The God of Jesus Christ comes alongside of us and mends our broken hearts. The God of Jesus Christ comes alongside of us and melts the icy hardness of our hearts. And then God sends us. God sends us out to others with hearts of love. That's the heart condition that God wants to give us. Hearts of love. So now let me go back and reflect a bit on this reading from Luke. The scene is a a few days after the violent death of Jesus. In fact, it's Easter Sunday, the evening of Easter. But these two disciples of Jesus don't yet know that Jesus had been raised from the dead. As they walked along that road to this town called Emmaus, their hearts are heavy and their hearts are broken. Their hearts are filled with sorrow and, and sadness. Then a man comes along and starts walking with them and talking with them. Now, we know it was Jesus, right? (laughs) But they didn't. And isn't that interesting? Not 
recognizing Jesus right there in their presence? Why didn't they recognize him? Well, let me turn the question around just a little bit and say, or ask, why don't we often recognize Jesus' presence with us? And I ask that because he's here. Each one of us lives our lives in the presence of the risen and living Jesus. But we don't always recognize that, do we? Do we? We don't always remember that, do we? We don't always notice that. We don't always live like that, do we? And why? I suppose for a whole variety of reasons, but I think it probably all comes down to with me being too preoccupied with me, myself, and I. Me being preoccupied with my joys or my frustration. Me being preoccupied by my job or my stress or my finances. I might be preoccupied with my anxieties, my anger, or my sorrow. And when we are focused on ourselves, at times we might miss the presence of Jesus, like the disciples. Jesus then diagnosed another heart condition. He said the disciples were slow of heart, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. It's all there in the scriptures, he said. Why don't you believe? Now, for them, it was the Old Testament, right? What we would call the Old Testament writings. But you and I, we've got more. We've got the New Testament. We've got the gospel accounts of Jesus' life. We have some of the early history of Christianity spreading like wildfire. And all of that, Scripture itself tells us, was written so that you and I, and this comes from the end of the Gospel of John, so that you and I might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing in him, you and I might have life in his name right now and forever. But all too often, we're slow to believe. We too are slow of heart. Oh yes, part of us, maybe a big part of us, longs to believe. And yet part of us wants more rational proof. There are times that we are way open to the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. But there are other times when it's my way or the highway, right? There are times when believing in Jesus makes sense. But there are times when we have so many questions, so many unanswered questions. Slow of heart. But here I return to the good news I started with. Jesus didn't and doesn't leave his disciples stuck in hardness of heart or with broken hearts or slowness of hearts. What he did and what he continues to do is to keep on walking with us. Whether we're aware of that or not. He keeps on walking with us. He's with us all the time. And because of that, from time to time, we might catch glimpses of him. We might catch an experience, if you will, of God with us. We might just be surprised today by the grace of Jesus Christ as he continues to reveal himself to us. And Jesus does that today in the same way as he did it in our scripture reading. It was through the word which he interpreted to them. And it was when they were gathered with him for a meal. And he took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to those disciples gathered at that table. And their eyes were opened through word and meal, through word and sacrament. Word and meal continue to form the core of what we do in worship to this day. When we experience Jesus through word and sacrament, we get another heart condition, burning hearts, not heart burn, burning hearts. The disciples asked, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? Burning hearts are hearts that are on fire again, or perhaps for the first time, with the love of Jesus. Burning hearts 
are a symptom of a faith that has come alive. Burning hearts melt the icy coldness of our hearts. Burning hearts lead us to share with others a spark of that fire and the warmth that it brings. This morning, I have invited us to think about heart conditions. And as I close now, now I want to ask you, what's the condition of your heart this morning? Are you heavy-hearted? Broken-hearted and hopeless? Do you have some hardness of heart? Are you slow-hearted and having a tough time this morning, this week, this month, believing? Or perhaps is your heart on fire with the spirit of the risen Jesus? If you have a medical heart condition, the wise thing to do is to submit to the care of a physician. If you have a spiritual heart condition, the wise thing to do is to submit to the care of the great physician, Jesus Christ. Whatever the condition of your heart, may you entrust the entirety of your life to Jesus today. Amen. As we continue with uh, the hymn, Day of Arising, please note that uh, Sarah will be singing the first stanza, and I invite you to join in then on the second stanza. Day of our rising, Christ on the Please join me in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen separated in our residences, but united by God's promises of restoration. We pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need, echoing today's psalm with the response, we call out to you. Come to the church so burdened by heartache, Give us faith to know your loving presence among us. Open the scriptures to us and nourish us with the bread of your word. Direct our church staff and leaders in their difficult tasks. 
bind into one all denominations around the globe in hope for the renewal of all things and uphold the work of the World Council of Churches. O God, our merciful Savior, we call out to you. Come to the earth. Bless all the natural world. Renew landscapes. Cleanse the waters and protect the animals. Save your people, especially at this time, from destructive storms and floods. Keep viruses in check for the sake of your beloved humans. O oh God, our benevolent gardener, come to the nations. Preserve all peoples from war and violence. Guide the leaders of nations, our president, our governors, and our legislators toward wise decisions in struggling against the virus and in reviving the economy. Teach all peoples how to share limited resources with those in greater need. Guide the work of the United Nations during this unprecedented situation. O oh God, our mighty peacemaker, we call out to you. Come to all who suffer from the virus. Comfort the mourners. Heal the sick. Sustain medical workers. Empower those researchers who are seeking a vaccine. Stay with us and accompany all those who are isolated or afraid. Give to those with prior ailments and chronic disease their necessary medical care. Especially we pray for those we name before you now, either out loud or silently. O oh God, our compassionate healer, As at Emmaus you joined the meal of the disciples, so come also to our tables. Uphold the farmers, ranchers, migrant workers, and all who produce, package, and market our food. Guard the health of those who work at grocery stores. Bless the efforts of local food banks. Enable us to feed the children who have relied on food given out at school. Show us how to feed the people living in refugee camps and nations experiencing famine and drought. O oh God, our generous provider, we call out to you. Walk with us on our roadways, whether marked with sorrow or joy, and receive now our petitions, both sad lament or fervent praise. O oh God, our beloved companion, we call out to you. Accept our praises for those who have died in the faith, including those who, stricken with the virus, who were stricken with the virus, the medical workers who died healing others. And this week, Catherine of Siena, the apostles Philip and James, and Bishop Athanasius, each of whom served you in their own time and place. Accompany us now as you did them, until the end of all things, at the end of all things, we feast at your table with all the saints in glory. O oh God, the mystery of life. With bold confidence in your providence, so holy and gracious God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our saving Lord. Amen.
holy and mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life and death, resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now please either commune others in your homes with the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you, or I'll speak those words right now and uh, you may take your own bread and eat it and then wine or juice and drink it. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
And now may the blessing of God and the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and his truth and his life now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed.